So I went back on the server, and he comes up to me and he says, Hey, I watched your tutorial, and now my house is really great. Will you come and see it? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Your last one wasn't great. And he's like, please. And I'm like, oh, fine. So I follow him all the way to his house, which again is a thousand blocks away. And it's great. I'm shocked. That tutorial must have been really amazing. And then I ask, can I go inside? And he says, it's practical. And already, alarm bells are going off in my head like... But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. So I go inside and I'm like... So I'm going to give you five easy steps to improve your interior. So this is the house I'm going to be making interior on. And if we go inside, we'll start immediately with the first step, which is demolition. Sorry, did I say demolition? I meant preparation. You need to get rid of everything that you've done previously so you have a completely clean slate. This includes removing anything that you've previously built, and it means filling in the walls and the floor, just getting your very basic box to work with. You might also want to light it up so that you can see everything that you're doing. This is a fairly easy step, and one of the most time-consuming. It might take you a little while to complete all of them, especially if you have a few stories like I do, but once you're finished, it should look fairly clean. Not very detailed, but clean, and it's a good start. You should find that your build looks something similar to this. Now that brings us on to our second step. You'll find that doing interior and exterior, they don't have that many dissimilarities. And much like the exterior, one of the key steps to improving your house is the framing, and that's no different for the interior. I'm going to be going around making the same wooden framing on the inside that I did on the outside, filling in the corners with pillars, and wherever I want there to be any sort of right angle to connect two pieces of uh, house together, I will make a frame. And Framing in particular is what causes the house to have a really nice shape. When everything has an outline, it's really aesthetically pleasing. If you went ahead and just did uh, no framing at all, it wouldn't look like the building had any structure to it, any foundation. Along with the framing, it's important to know where you're going to put your staircases, because staircases can be very finicky things. You need to make sure that they don't get in the way, but they're convenient enough for you to use. And while you're there, you have to make the floors for the second and third story if you have them, like I do. So it's important while you're framing to keep in mind where you're going to put your staircase and how you're going to decorate it with the frame. It's also important to have as much consistency as possible. If you have one type of framing on one side of your house, for instance, you have pillars in the middle of your floor, and then on the other side of the house you have no framing at all, it's going to look rather bad. So if you are going to be doing some heavy framing, do make sure that it's the same throughout your build. And when you're finally finished, it should look a little bit something like this, which brings us on nicely to the third step, which is the walls. From your preparation, the walls should be fairly clean, but lack detail. Now we can't move the windows around because that would mess with the exterior and we can't break into the walls because that would create a hole in the wall. So we have to work around our windows and we have to try and detail the wall in the best way we can. I tend to do that by adding logs around it or giving the window some sort of frame or anything like that. It's kind of up to you how you do it. You can go for a simple one, or you can try and overcomplicate it. If, like me, you find that you have quite large spaces of wall which you need to detail, but aren't quite sure what to do, you can often come up with these little tricks that really define the room and take up the space. For example, in this part I'm making it a fireplace, like a very old rustic fireplace that you might find in an, a very old inn. And I'm just going to detail it with some coal ore to make it look like there was a fire there, and then add iron fence to close it off. You may also at this point want to fix up your lighting a little bit. I place torches in a consistent manner on all of my beams so that they don't look out of place but at the same time light up the room really nicely. This point is a good opportunity to make sure that your entire build is consistent. 
It was very easy to make framework while it was empty, but now that you're starting to detail it a little bit more, you might find that you've missed a few bits like I have. That brings us on nicely to the fourth step, which is furniture. This is when the build really starts to come together, and we're getting quite close to finishing. You may notice that I've been completely ignoring the top half of the build. This is because I'm trying to keep it in short, digestible steps for everyone, while not taking an hour to do the build myself. But the principles remain the same, no matter what room you're doing. Okay, so moving on to the furniture. You want to add things that complement the room. Often, you can decorate a wall with shelves, desks, chairs, storage area, kitchen area, that kind of thing. It's completely up to you what you want to do, but I try to keep it within the boundaries of a normal house. I wouldn't, for example, keep an elephant stable in the house. So there are various techniques that you can do to make furniture. Most of them involve steps and half slabs, and you can see from the way that I'm making these things how that would work. This step is actually fairly short, but it's essential for the last step, which is the fine details. Now that you have all your furniture, you really need to put stuff on it, and I'm not going to lie, it's mainly putting pots of flowers everywhere. You also want to add carpets, uh, anvils, anything like that. Bookshelves is a good one. These decorative blocks really complement the room and make it come together. The contrast of the colours is essential. I chose a red carpet because it really stands out. And finally, you can add things like paintings, item frames, armor stands which you can put behind glass to make a cabinet. And once that's done, you've kind of finished your entire interior. It really isn't as hard as it seems, you just need to make sure that you have the base foundation of the framework, and then filling everything in with furniture and fine details is the easy bit. And that's it! Thank you very much for watching, I really hope these steps helped, I know they're not quite as clear cut as making a house 5 steps to improve your house, but I hope they helped you nonetheless, thank you very much for watching, goodbye!